Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Connor Knowles, and this is the Narrative Gods Podcast, episode 67. Today, joining me, as always, we have the one, the only, Stephen Sims. Hello. How are you Thank today? You and the only, the one, Daniel Navarroli. Yeah, it's me. But who cares about those two? Because today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest joining us from the Backlog Banter YouTube page. I believe you're on podcast services as well. Tucker Hazel, yeah, everyone. Yeah, stuff. Hey. We do claps. We do claps. Now, Tucker, you were on the Backlog Banter podcast. Uh, you also put out episodes with uh, movie reviews, stuff like that. Tell me a little bit about your page. Yeah, so Backlog Banter, kind of just an overall umbrella term for all the content that we do. It's just the channel name. We have a show called Backlog Banter that's for our specific video game discussions. We also got a couple other shows, Quest for the Bestest. We're reviewing all the best picture winners in a random order and ranking them. Very fun, very long journey. There's 96, uh, 93 of those now. Um, we we're, do lots of just normal video game reviews, movie reviews, other kind of stuff. It's just me and my friends hanging out, uh, learning how to use Premiere and Photoshop and everything and, and make uh, YouTube videos, as, as many people have started doing since quarantine. So we're just among those. But I would really appreciate it if you watch those videos because I think they're relatively good. Yeah, check it out. What was the most recent movie you reviewed? Uh, we reviewed Spiral from the Book of Saw last... Uh, we actually put that up two days ago, I think. Uh, and we added that to our Saw ranking, which we also did a full series review, ranking all the Saw movies a couple days before that to prepare. So that was, that was a journey, but it was really fun to be able to have just a long conversation about all these dumb movies. With They're the Saw good. movies, I think I've only seen like one, two, and three. That's it's all you need Saw. Saw, Saw, yeah, yeah. And like, I remember considering one and two good. Are those still good? Does that hold up at all? One is definitely the best. And I think that's the general consensus that it's actually a very good movie. It's usually influential. It's got a really interesting mystery. The introduction of John Kramer and the idea of that these two guys being chained in the room. What a great mystery. What a great, like, general conceit for a film. And it devolves after that pretty quickly, I might add. But there's a interweaving background plot with all these characters and flashbacks and stuff that actually is a very fun puzzle to figure out and that's what i really got into as as i got into the series is figuring out how things connect and characters were actually in the background this whole time and stuff so it's really fun series it's stupid most of them are bad but it's really fun to get into and if you know all the movies it's really fun to talk about yeah, I remember the ending of the first one, like, shocking me as a kid. But, like, no, I, I have no idea if that would hold up. Big twist. Hundred percent. Yeah. It was a big twist. Good twist, you know? Yeah. I mean, it loses impact if you've seen the movie, like, three times. But yeah. it's, still, it's still a good twist. It's probably one of the better twists. They've got some pretty crappy twists later on in the series. but Oh, it, it gets crazy. Like, after, like, the Amanda trilogy is what I would call it, one, two, and three. Sure. It, it gets crazy with all the cop stuff. And I forget yeah. the guys, the, the main Hoffman. cop guy, yeah. Hoffman. Once, once Hoffman gets introduced, it gets crazy, those movies. It does. <laughs> yeah and i so found amanda's that really fun lady? But... yeah amanda's the pig lady amanda's, amanda's the pig spoilers. First, spoilers. first apprentice well spoilers yeah. for saw 2 if you didn't see saw 2 in like 2005 or whatever but uh they, there's there's a double secret apprentice and a triple secret apprentice even a quadruple secret apprentice if you watch enough of the movies which is really stupid but it's kind of fun it's kind of, it's a guilty pleasure yeah how to get those secret apprentices you know never know uh who's anyways. your <laughs> <laughs> Who's my secret apprentice? Yeah, yeah. You're Is my it secret me? apprentice. Oh, oh. We'll go on a giant murdering spree. So, so <laughs> secret you didn't even know it. <laughs> right, yeah, I did. <laughs> secret. Anyways, guys, we will now move on to some video game news because that's what we do on this podcast, not movies. Yeah, sorry. Well, sometimes it's movies. first of all. I'd like so, I, you two like Connor and Daniel. You've been doing a bit of a bit of something something on the old like side. Let, let's talk about that for two seconds. Let's plug about. Let's talk okay. about it. Let's plug it. I want to know about this because even I don't know what you've done. Uh, we've only done one thing so far. I've done two things. <laughs> you've done one. Uh, one, thing. one thing. One thing. Whatever. Me and Daniel have started a movie podcast where we just review a different movie each week. Uh, our first That's episode. Awesome is not out yet but it will be out in the coming days we reviewed uh what did we review star wars a new hope yes yeah. uh, i've so heard of it yeah 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 i think that was a good have. good start for our film oh, podcast yes. Decent start. Start. i believe our second episode is going to be Never the fast and furious the first movie oh i just yeah. watched that i'm working my way through the, the fast series for the first time currently right okay. now leading up to fast nine i'm i just watched tokyo drift last week Nice. I don't like that movie, but I like oh, two a lot. I know that's an uncommon opinion. What? Two, three. What a fucking soundtrack, though. 
in yeah. Tokyo Drift. I yeah. love Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Did, you, did, you, did you just say you like two though? Two is a yeah. fantastic yes. film. Good on it's you. Fun. Good on you, kid. Uh, that's the best one, honestly. <laughs> no, it's all downhill from there. No, it's fast. not. That Tucker, colored you... car sequence, fun. Tucker, Sorry, it's not. It's Eject not. Don't listen Tito, to him. Cause, don't come listen on. To him. It's the best one. I'll save. I'll save my opinions once I've seen the whole series. But yeah, don't listen to him. Number two is great film. But I will certainly be tuning in. I would love to hear your thoughts on both The New Hope, which is one of my favorite movies, and uh, Fast, the original Fast and Furious, The Fast and the Furious, which I don't like very much. So that's a good balance there. Uh, me and Daniel also filmed a uh, Resident Evil 8 spoiler cast with uh, our friend Nick Roy, or Nick a.k.a. Roy, from Just for Fun Games. So you can go chat. catch that oh, yeah. in the coming days. Is he here? Uh, yeah. What's up, Nick? Hey, Hi. hey Nick. I don't know you. Uh, he's cool. <laughs> me, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, guys, we will now move on to some video game news. And first up, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. According to industry heavyweight Jeff Grubb, Starfield will be an Xbox and PC exclusive. Now, some other news has also come out uh, revolving around this in the last few days. There's been a lot of leaks, a lot of YouTubers saying the game's coming out this year, a lot of people saying it's not. Uh, Jason uh, Schreier came out today. He said that the game will not be coming out till late 2022, according to his sources. So we will see who is right. Daniel, what do yeah. we think about all this? I just want to give a shout out to that joke that I put in there that nobody really talked about, except for Sims. Thank you. It was the heavyweight joke? It was the funny thing that they said oh, in that yeah. one article? Okay. Well, thank you. I just literally um, thought he was like, I know. Heavyweight. No, that was a joke. That was something that somebody said in an article and it became a joke. Right, um, yeah. But the Starfield thing, I think it'll be interesting if it does come out in 2022 because, like, that is not what Bethesda has been doing. Like, since Fallout 4, they've been show, put it out show and put it out and for them to if they are teasing it which i think that they probably will this year um i i would like them to put it out but if, if it's not ready it's not ready yeah with that i mean the only thing they did put out that was fallout 4 since then well fallout 76 as well so well they've helped with that they, yeah they helped with that uh but yeah as far as it being in 2022 that's i mean that sounds right i guess I don't really know. Tucker, what are your thoughts on Starfield as a whole? Starfield, I mean, that sounds really interesting. I like Skyrim a lot. I like Fallout 4 a lot. And I, I, I didn't beat it, but I enjoyed with the time that I had with it. Um, and I'm interested to see them put a new spin in a new location, you know, uh, sci-fi. I mean, that's with their gameplay stuff and in hopefully a more modern, more polished, less buggy uh, completed project could be really, really cool. We don't know what it is yet. We haven't seen any of it. It's just the logo. Um, announced way too early alongside Elder Scrolls, 6, but Elder Scrolls 6, which is also announced way too early. But I think that they, the uh, Fallout 4 thing, I think, if you think about it, it's kind of just a, it seems like a one-off deal. I wouldn't expect it to come out this year because uh, other games take a long time to in from announce to release. So 2022, makes sense. I mean, it's interesting. I'm, I'll be interested to see how the game is, is announced, gameplay, trailers, all that still are coming. So we have a long time to wait for that, though. It's been so long since proper Bethesda put out a game, though. Like, their last yeah. one was Fallout 4, and they did just help with Fallout 7. It's been six years. So it's like, yeah, year. so it's like, I don't understand why it couldn't be this year when the rumor was playing this yeah. year. It was like, I, I, that was believable, because it's been six years since you guys have put out a game. Like, And they were announced at, what, 20... E3 2019, I think. 2019, yeah. 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 yeah, both of them. And it's like... Or officially, because you know, it was it, teased it, for years. If Starfield's going to be 2022, where does that even put Elder Scrolls 6? Like, 2026 yeah. at the earliest, you know? Like, and that's so far. That's crazy. We wouldn't get it's an Elder Scrolls It's a 15-year time gap between yeah, Elder Scrolls yeah. entries. Get, mainline. Uh, Sims, yeah. what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I'll play, I'll play Devil's Advocate and say... I, there's a possibility we might see it this year. And like all this negating of trying to put it, put it, you know, give it, you know, Jason Schreier's source, like his source could have been told, yeah, it's the end of 2022, just to create like that shock value moment. Because it's a big moment as well. Like it comes out today that Xbox and Bethesda's conference is going to be the same thing. I believe I read yeah, that, that right. Yeah. Well, well t I, we could tie that story yeah. right into here. Uh, it was official from Matt Booty, the head of games of Xbox. He said that it will just be a joint uh, showcase. Yeah. They'll both just have one big showcase which is awesome. I think it's probably the right way to go about it. Yeah, and and this is a big deal as well. Like this is we say it every year, well we haven't said it every year, but it has been said every year that this is this has to be X's Xbox's one to own as well as and now having that sidekick of Bethesda there with them. Like and if if they yeah. come out and say Starfield is this year and it looks great, 
and like that would just be the moment that steals the show and they need something like that especially and you know they'll need a halo a date and they'll need they'll need a starfield big update as well even if it is next year march uh then that's still good to be fair it's still it's still it's still is it uh this physical year the fees fee physical is that the word it's called the fiscal, fiscal year yeah so i say physical too you know yeah yeah me too so i don't know the hype around it as well, like, we've all been, like, taught a valuable lesson of, like, not getting hyped for things. Like, look at Cyberpunk. Like, yeah. We all got really excited for yeah. Cyberpunk, and then it, be- it became, you know, a, a letdown for, for, from its own, from the from its own, like, developers' und- undoings. That's the word, isn't it? Why not? So what I'm trying to say is, I forgot, because my brain's not working today. I I just think... Because we we've not seen anything like we've seen a logo and then we've seen oh, we saw like a spaceship or like a space thing, big. I don't know satellite. An I don't know an object. Yeah, in space. But yeah. We don't know what this game is going to be. Like no. we're all just assuming that it will be Skyrim in space. Yeah, yeah, but we we don't know yeah. what that means. It's going to no, be. No, it doesn't. No, we don't know what you it know? means. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. obviously when they... multiple planets though. You know, yeah, and at like that point, just no man's sky. Thing. Yeah. 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 There you go. So, Those are the only two options for any game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just it's it's I don't know. I'd I'd rather just wait and see. There's a lot of hype, but I'm gonna sneeze. Um, there's a lot of hype. Great. He's not wrong. It's so much hype it came out as a sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> it's just it's too. I want to see it before you know. If if they show like they do like the Fallout the Fallout in 2015. 15 just show us it and then give us a date and if it is this year then the whole crowd goes wild or, or yeah the people at home go wild um yeah it's just wait I, I don't know we're all itching for some news aren't we because we kind of i think after ratchet it kind of just goes silent doesn't it this year uh from what we know so far um i think that todd howard probably also has a chip on his shoulder i think like f- people like fallout 4 it wasn't like the biggest Elder Scroll or Fallout game in the franchise, uh, and then seventy six happened. He wasn't like a huge part of it, but he helped with it. Uh, I think Todd Howard feels like he needs to prove himself again, um, and I think this game will probably be pretty good. This is also a big passion project for them. They've been talking about this for years, mm. like a very long, like since before Skyrim even came out. They've been talking about making a space game, so it's definitely been a passion project of theirs uh as far as uh xbox and bethesda joining for the conference uh i would hope that's how it is right is uh, is that like confirmation yeah on how that matt, is yeah. matt booty uh, confirmed it. confirmed that uh, sure so i like honestly i would prefer if xbox just didn't even say bethesda or like don't have like like i don't want it like split like now here's I don't the, think the games just yeah, the xbox just, showcase just join them in already with xbox you know like i don't want this whole like split thing where we're doing xbox and bethesda like they just they are now yeah. xbox make them xbox yeah. make them fully a part of that family and this this e3 can be like a big coming out party for that you know and uh if they did somehow get starfield this year on top of halo on top of uh maybe a new forza or something like that that'd be huge for xbox to have three big titles like that just in one year they they could really uh you know turn a lot of people to buy the series x over ps5 just with that having a big fall uh tucker what do you think about the uh whole conference situation i think that since they know how exciting this is regardless of the if starfield the game is coming out this year or next year or you know middle next year whatever i think that they do show something for it at e3 and i think at least you know my projection for my my uh my head cannon for what xbox's e3 conference is like i think they close on that starfield reveal it, whether it's a a cinematic trailer which i think is more likely than gameplay considering we've never seen a cinematic trailer for the game uh something to really close out the show and Without saying, hey, this is the Bethesda thing now, it's the big Xbox game. This is what we're ending on. We're really proud of it. We're really proud that Bethesda has joined us. You know, someone out on stage or on the digital stage coming out and be like, we're so happy Bethesda joined us. Here's the first look at Starfield. And that is a killer way to end the show. And I think with that, you also you can start the conference with uh, that some something for Halo Infinite. Or maybe that's the middle of the show something. But they have these tent poles now, and Bethesda is one of them. And I think they really lean heavily on that and close the show with Starfield. I guarantee they start their show with Halo. Yeah. I yeah, put my I have to. Hey guys, my it's hat. better now. 
<laughs> imagine um, if listen. if it isn't. Like, imagine if it, they put the video out. The same. I think they should do the same exact gameplay trailer that they put out last time. And then imagine if that's met by oh, people still don't like it. What do they do? Like, what do they do? He's yeah, just, just gotta put it out at that point. If that was the yeah. case. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna look that bad like that. But I um, thought it looked great. I don't. I don't go. I thought it looked alright. Like I looked I think, at it like, oh, this looks interesting. Like it's like right, it seems kind of funny. But I mean, the visuals of the game looked great from that trailer. I, I have nothing. Nothing wrong with it. I'm also um, not a huge Halo guy, so I do want to say Maybe something. To, well, what you said, Connor. I don't think that. I think that it will just be the Xbox showcase. But I do think like the Bethesda stuff might have like a block in there of like now this is like everything Bethesda is going to show back to back to back to back. Like it's just going to be all their studios, Bethesda studios leading in. Then it'll be Starfield at the end. Yeah, I have like a vision in my mind of them just like having the logo of like Bethesda and uh, all their studios underneath and Xbox and all their studios. And then it just like joining together. Oh, yeah. You know, Xbox That'd be a thing. cool yeah. little package. Yeah, that'd be, cool. that'd be bad. Sure had that then it's like here's all these great studios we now own that are making games exclusive for xbox like that well there's like... that great logo they might just use that which is the one has like the 23 studios like all their logos under it yeah and like yeah, xbox that, at the top join in the bethesda games like imagine how cool that'd be uh yeah. i do want to touch on the exclusivity which is now uh somewhat confirmed not 100 percent confirmed but you know confirmed enough that it will be exclusive starfield will be exclusive to xbox and pc uh what do we think about that daniel um again i always bring it up i hate any exclusivity um no matter what console it really is i just don't like the idea of somebody not being able to play a game but i said this since they bought bethesda that all of it will be exclusive that's i've been i that's all i've been saying i really haven't thought the other way at all so this is pretty much what i expected to be honest sims what are your thoughts as somebody now you, I believe, thought it would come to PS5 still, right? Starfield. I did. I, I, in my mindset, I was on the, I was on the side of, yeah, you, you, you buy it, put it on the Games Pass, but also put it, just put it on the PlayStation, because then people are buying on the PlayStation, and it's just more money to be made. If that, like, that makes sense, perfect sense, right? You've got Games Pass, you've got your Xbox people that, you know, they've got the Games Pass and they've just got to, got to play on the Games Pass, pay the $15 a month or whatever they need to pay for it. And then the PlayStation and, and the PlayStation people who who are, who, you know, who can't afford to buy play an, an Xbox or who can't, you know, or just don't don't like Xbox, you hate them with a passion, but they obviously want to play these great games. And then they'll do the thing that they don't realise they're doing, they're funding the people they supposedly hate. And then Xbox yeah. win is a win win for Xbox, but I understand it if if Xbox they 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 Paris Lily like you don't you don't spend seven point five billion dollars to make it not an exclusive keep so. the status quo yeah, yeah. I, 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 I understand it and maybe is I want to say maybe it is a time exclusive but it won't be and it's fine I don't care like I don't give a shit like Starfield comes out day one on Games Pass. I ain't paid sixty pound for that. I'm paying. Amazing. I'm paying nothing. I'm paying ten pound. I've just. I literally just bought it before this podcast. Like, we buy it monthly because yeah. sometimes we don't know. We don't know if we need. If we need, I don't use it. The kids use it, but my, my little one wants to play Minecraft, and then she can't get on it. So I was like, right, give me a minute. Link, reading code done. Sweet as a nut. So, yeah, I don't. At this point, I I'm not forced. Like I've got, I'm privileged enough to have both consoles. I don't have the we we don't have the newer console, newer Xbox. Um, I say I don't. The, what my daughter has an S. <laughs> don't ask. But we've got two standard Xbox one uh, Xbox ones downstairs, and we will upgrade. We, we do. Uh, maybe after E three, you know, E three next next month. This time, this time next month we will know. But this time next month, like me and the missus might be on a hunt for an Xbox Series X because we want to play Starfield. That's been, just been announced for October thirtieth. You know what I'm saying, like, and I have to go through it all over again. The stress. I don't want to do that again. Wait the date, October thirtieth. That'd be a cool one. Yeah, oh, I think that's. I, I think know. that's uh, back for Blood's release date or something like that. Oh. I think it's in October. Like it in is, October. Yeah. October. It will be. Let me predict. October. The okay. October. Ooh, specific prediction. October the 29th. Wow. What is that, Friday? Yeah, it's Friday. 30th is a Saturday. There you go. There you go. Goodbye. We're here first, uh, yeah, folks. As... 
as far as the exclusivity goes, yeah, I think it was always the obvious choice. I mean, you don't, you could have the new Bethesda Game Studios RPG on your console exclusive, or you'd have to get Game Pass on PC to get it. You know, and, I mean, that's just a huge get. Why would you give it to your competition? It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It, you know, this is what the whole deal was for. Tucker, are you bothered by the exclusivity at all? Personally, not really. I, I am unlike Daniel. I don't. Exclusives make sense to me. You know, I can't really fight it, so why bother, at least in my eyes? But I think that the exclusivity makes sense for them because while they're losing, uh, like Sims was saying, the idea of people on PlayStation still buying it, I think the idea of having this Starfield as the next big Bethesda game, you know, technically the next Skyrim, which of course one of the biggest games of all time, exclusive to their console, while it's not accessible on PlayStation, it pushes people to buy those consoles. I've got a roommate who has only a PlayStation 5, and when I told him the other day, hey, the, the you know, Elder Scrolls and Starfield, those are only going to be an Xbox. He's like, shit, I guess I'll have to get an Xbox. And he and stood I think up and he flipped the table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, no, but seriously, I think a lot of people are going to be willing to purchase an Xbox for this, considering, especially by the time that those come out, especially Elder Scrolls 6, the, the consoles will have dropped in price a little bit. Game Pass is, of course, a great deal, and it'll just get so many people into the ecosystem with such a big draw. I mean, of course, they've got their own games on there. The Xbox Game Studios puts their games on there. But this is this is on another level because this is this is a generation defining game being put on to Game Pass for essentially free, though you pay monthly for it. So it's it's a great get and it's going to be a huge benefit for Xbox in the long run. We'll see how the exclusivity harms or helps the sales of it, but I think it's going to do well. And I think hopefully it'll be a great game. So I want to say one thing real quick. I know what you were going to say, Sims, but I want to say one thing real quick. Uh, the whole kind of mentality behind Xbox for like, I guess the past year or so was kind of, they're just going to kind of put games wherever and all that kind of stuff. They're not worried about if it's PC or the console or mobile with xCloud. I think that them saying that this is like exclusive, like pretty much all Bethesda is going to be exclusive. I think that this really says they do actually care about people yeah. buying the console. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it isn't just about PC or whatever. Like, like, I, I think that this really says that, yeah, we want people buying an Xbox as well. It helps so much with their catalog, too. Like, just having yeah. all these Bethesda games. Like, when uh, I get hyped up when I see like those, uh, those trailers of just like snippets of games put together, you know, like when PlayStation has it, like, real, Rise, yeah. God of War, Last of Us, all this, even if it's games oh, yeah. I'm not into, it's just cool that that's in this ecosystem. That's gonna be really hype when yeah. Xbox can put a trailer together like that with Hellblade, Starfield, Halo, Doom Guy, or the Doom Guy. Yeah, yeah, you have all that, and it makes you excited to be an Xbox player, you know, yeah, in a way that I don't think the last generation for Xbox had. I did never own an Xbox one. My my roommate has one, I don't really use it. I use it to play Banjo Kazooie, that's the only time I ever used Henry. it, but uh. A great reason. Amazing game. But um, you look back on the big games of that generation, even the biggest ones are like, yeah, that was a good game, but it didn't change the industry. It wasn't one of the big games of the year. And so it's a little bit disappointing looking back on the generation, but I think they're clearly putting the effort now to say, hey, we've got all these studios. They're making the games you want, and this is all on Xbox. Hey, look look how great this is. And when we get that scissor reel, maybe even at the end of this E3, you know, as a closer after the Starfield thing, and they've got all the Bethesda stuff and all the games. Rare's got their new game coming out. They've got updates. They've got Halo. It's going to be really impressive in a way that I don't think the rest of that their last generation had. Yeah. I, I don't have a Series X right now. I guarantee I see a trailer like that at the end of the Xbox conference. I'm going to go buy an Xbox Series X right then and there, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, moving on. Sticking with uh, Xbox. I'm... One one second, sorry. Ahead, sorry. Uh, so ahead, um, Chris is in sorry. the chat. Um, he's just reiterating what we spoke about with Jason Schreier earlier. He said, uh, "Let me get. Let me. <clears throat> this is what Jason said. Uh, I, I quote: Let me. Let me make this very clear. Bethesda's plan is to tease a release date for Starfield at E3. The date is in late 2022. I'll leave the sp- specifics to them. We'll keep your expectations in check and refrain from sending death threats when the room is." That... You need to stop sneezing. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to stop um, talking. But I sneeze. mean at yeah. least two death threats. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what, uh, yeah, at the minimum. Uh, what I will say is, like, yeah, there is a lot of conflicting things. We're not going to know until there's an official statement. That's just what I'm going to say. There's a lot of conflicting things. There's been so many reports recently of it coming out this year. So who actually really knows? Like, are Schreier sources more reliable than everybody else's? I don't know. Sure. 
yeah we we, we won't I brought Schreier. Schreier's up i, I yeah. could have brought up everyone else's th- uh, yeah sources too but you know Schreier was just the most notable name to say something on the subject and yeah and really who who cares like the game will be out when it's out there'll be other games in the in the middle that really this, this year's already been great yeah, we, yeah we're gonna get so many games of course mm-hmm. and no worries chris thank you thanks for that because i'd not seen that all day um i'm gonna go and uh, do something um please continue sure Lock sims Sticking with Xbox, some new titles will be coming to Xbox Game Pass, including Knockout City, launching day and date on May 21st. And then other games are coming to the console, as, or, uh, the service as well, including Pickle 2 and Maneater. Uh, Pickle 2 will be May 20th, and Maneater will be May 25th. Is yeah, Knockout City the here. dodgeball sort of game? Mm-hmm. Yeah. With that really terrible by, uh, trailer yeah. in the Nintendo Direct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's that one. Oh, well, it was also, so it was also, it was like back to back because it was, it was at the Nintendo one and then it was also at some PlayStation one as well. And like oh, the PlayStation yeah, one was like, game. it was like extended and it was even mm. longer than, than the Nintendo one. It's like, I don't need yeah. to see so much of this game. Um, uh, I will say though, with this game, very smart get for Xbox. Again, they're picking very smart games to get on here day and date for day one. Uh, like this Outriders, is EA, right? Yeah, this is EA. Okay. Uh, I believe uh, I could be wrong. Maybe you should look that one up. Then I think it but, is. I think yeah, it, I, I, I believe so as well. But um, yeah, they're picking very smart games with Outriders earlier this year. That was another game I thought mm, might not sell the best, might not be able to capture an audience. But it being on Game Pass will just have so many uh players ready to go right there once they launch with it there was another game too this year i can't remember that launch on game pass but uh yeah knockout city i mean wow it doesn't uh, look baseball. like my... MLB it was, it show, you're MLB. Right. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah. another smart gap for them uh knockout city it, it, i didn't think it looked that great uh it, you know i think it's a good get for game pass and like it'd be something i'd be willing to check out if i'm already on game pass because why not uh yeah, real maybe. quick uh and then i'll let you go tucker it, it 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 says like with ea play so it is like some sort of ea is probably like publishing EA publishes it yeah but okay. it's yeah so what i the research that i just did uh it's an ea original published by ea developed by villain studios who just did mario kart live home tour which is a very weird combination of, of interesting game titles so but, is this technically um, like their first game well i can do a little more research about the studio because i mean okay. obviously very new but i think you know home home circuit home interesting i mean my friend and i called it home invasion that was our, our joke <laughs> yeah, for a while funny. mario kart life home invasion uh but yeah i mean i think the game looks quality it just unfortunately from that really terribly not funny trailer that they had and the visual style it seems a little bit hey this is a fun poppy uh, multiplayer game and we get tons of those and i'm curious to see if that stands out from the rest because it is a different sort of gameplay because you're you're passing balls around yeah but it doesn't seem to have very much hype behind it and i think maybe game pass will uh will promote that because less so many people will have access to it but i can also see it just getting lost in the shuffle what i will say to that it also to like the quality is that i i keep i say this on the show all the time this game does not have a in appealing art style it is the same like Fortnite. uh uh just cartoon aesthetic that so many games are doing exactly. you know what other game that ea just did that had this a similar aesthetic that nobody played which was rocket arena that came out last year oh geez, no yeah. one played rocket arena it just died they, they put it out to die and then it'd be like i met i think initially it was like a 30 dollar game that they made free to play like yep. really quickly um so i just i hope that, that for just for the studio's sake that people play it but it's good that it's on game pass day one yeah, because regardless, even if people don't play it, they're getting paid by Xbox, so this game will, for them, be a success, quote-unquote, and they can continue making games. So hopefully it's solid, but they can keep making games regardless. Like, this isn't going to kill the studio if it doesn't do exactly. well. And yeah, the- I probably would have pushed the release date a little bit just to help, you know, it's kind of coming out a lot, around a lot of other games, so maybe it'd capture an audience better in, like, mid What was the release date again? May 20th. May no, 20th? Today, oh, yeah. that's today. Oh, oh today? yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. out today right now. Uh, it's May twenty first on mine. Oh, twenty first. Oh, that. Well, I guess technically that's Friday. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I've got twenty eighth or somewhere. Uh, Dude, Sims, you like dodgeball? You used to be in a dodgeball uh, league. Yeah, I had a coach famous. I remember. I never forget his yeah. quote. He said, "If you can dodge a ball, you can dodge a wrench." No, nope, other way around. Other way around. Nah, you could dodge fine. a wrench, she could dodge a ball. And he throws it. <laughs> Were you there too? Uh, Sims' coach made the different quote. I was there. I was the one that got the wrench thrown at. Um, um, to be nice all, try. To be fair, to to the point of Knockout City and and, and to being compared to Rocket Arena, I think they're doing quite a good job of promoting this game. Like they've got that the block 
the block party or something that's around you. We all get to play it, even if you don't have Games Pass, for the next 10 days for free. Um, so it gives people, especially kids, I mean, this game is aimed for kids. So it's another option to play with their friends. Um, you know, my my kid might pick it up. I might speak to, you know, I'll say, oh, this game, you could play this game. And if it's free, it's accessible. And he, like her friend and, and, and herself can play this game together. And, and that's how Fortnite got started. Like kids all just join in in this social space and like just play and play the game together. So I think that giving everyone the 10 days to look at it, plus being on Games Pass, I think it stands a chance, uh, at least for a month, like a big following for the next month. For a week. Like, yeah, Two yeah, weeks. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, but, you know, and, and if the kids stick around and, and it, you know, and they enjoy it and it's fun, then why not? I, it's not for me. It's not, I don't think it's for any of us. But it's, I think for a younger audience, I think, you know, playing dodgeball is a great premise in, in a Fortnite style like i know daniel doesn't like the fortnite style but i just think it's overplayed yeah 100 percent. yeah 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 exactly not that i hate fortnite for looking the way it is that's not my issue i just hate that every other game is trying to look like that <clears throat> true yeah it definitely waters down the potential of that art style which is really clean and does look well when it look really good when it's put through you know all the half high quality stuff i mean fortnite's a good looking game and it runs well and everything so maybe that's why a lot of people are copying it. of course it's popular but it also runs very easily on things yeah. so it's just this generation's art style whatever yeah i want i want people to be more unique with their art styles you know chris makes that's a, that's just sorry chris makes a point in the chat it's probably a short life uh a, a probably a short shelf life but it might be fun and you know i think We'll, we'll find out by the next week. We'll see. I mean, let's check, you know, check your Twitch and we'll see what the audience are saying. So let's see. Let's not, I'm, I'm not saying we are writing it off, but let's not write it off and then let's see what happens. Because it might have a good gameplay loop as well. Like everyone wrote, for, when when Fortnite came out, because obviously Fortnite was a single player game, then they were doing this Battle Royal, and then and now look at Fortnite. Look at and And if EA market it right and they get the right team behind it, and they get the they get the game in front of the right audience, especially it's all with kids. To the guy in your room, who's the guy in your room? Do you have him? Where's he at? The guy in your room, Sims. Oh, he's, it's all thanks to, to that guy. He is. He's, there he is. Oh, it's all thanks to that guy right there. there I thought there. you were trying to scare him. No, like, hey, this no. guy behind you. Look, <laughs> I genuinely thought. Yeah. I, f- I thought it was all about the Oogie Boogie man. Sorry. <laughs> you did was all up in action figures super saiyan 4 goku <laughs> uh, pretty, yeah, no it's super saiyan god okay that's the blue oh, yeah, super saiyan god fuck man how did yeah. i fuck that up anyway, I dragon know. ball uh, shout out shout out to peggle 2 <laughs> coming to game pass today uh pop cap make peggle 3 where's peggle I'm not, 3 i'm not asking anymore i am demanding i am demanding peggle 3 pop cap, i will, I will write that threat PVZ, but... on switch please why not oh yeah can we get that as well you know, and well, there's the whole the trilogy. Game. Do you like the whole trilogy, Tucker? I've only played the first one. Oh, actually, I guess I played the second one. Plans for Zombies but... Three. Yeah, is there? Uh, well, uh, yeah. There's the the warfare stuff. Yeah, it's it's not traditional, Connor. No, no, no. He's talking oh, about okay. the. Are you talking about the gun one? Or are you talking? No, about I'm talking about one? normal Plants vs. Zombies. Oh, okay. I'm confused then. Because like the, the, gun, the warfare great. has like three games. Garden right? Warfare. Okay. Yes. Top Cap's yeah. becoming just like Valve. They can't count to three. Uh, just make Peggle Three Plants vs. They did with the with warfare. They, have a they got game. to a third with that one. Yeah. Surprised. No Battle, one for that. Battle for Neighborville. Battle for Neighborville. Whatever. Uh, Whatever. Okay, cool. Also, Man Eater coming May 25th. Yeah, yeah on, I, I missed that game last year, so oh, I definitely yeah. want to try on it. On Man Eater, because it was it was free for PlayStation Plus in January, I believe. It was, I could, yeah. yeah. A lot of people uh, checked it out then. Yeah, Nat, like Nat, Natalie played it. Um, she put it. She checked it out a couple of, like, last week. Um, she's finished it, platted it. She said she really enjoyed it. Just a nice relaxing, just chilling as a shop, just nom yeah. nom nom in. And she was like, "I was I like, I love that um, Chris Parnell is like narrating the whole game, yeah. and he's so funny. So like, it's just great." Yeah, I love she Chris said Parnell. she really enjoyed it, and I was surprised. Like, she was like, "Oh, I finished it," and she was like, "Oh, I might play it." And then like twelve hours later, she was like, "Yeah, I played it." I was like, "Oh, easy play." But it looks it, yeah. Like she just. I don't was... think it's very. It's not a very big game. No, but it's a fun game. Yeah. So if you like That's eating not... people, nom 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 nom. Is that the sounds you make when you eat people every day? Every day. Oh God. Okay. I don't want to see that. Okay, Anyways, we got it wrong. <laughs> we got some new video game trailers, boys. We got a new trailer for Mario Golf Super Rush. 
which is coming out uh, late June sometime, June 23rd, uh, Ju so Yeah, like, the end of June, yeah. End of June. And then we also got a new trailer for the Dark Pictures antho anthology House of Ashes, which yeah. stars Ashley Tisdale. There's uh, it was like a teaser. Coming May 27th. Yeah, yeah, like a teaser. Uh, guys, these two games, very similar. Uh, where do we want to start? <laughs> Daniel? Uh, extremely similar. <laughs> <laughs> extremely similar. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched this, the, what is it called? Super Rush. Super Rush, Super Rush one. Uh, that one, they actually kind of went in and there was like a narrator kind of explaining a little bit more about the game. It was like a little bit longer of a trailer. Uh, mm. I wish that they, this was kind of more of what they showed initially because like I actually kind of like this trailer. They kind of broke down what the speed mode was or brush mode, whatever it's called, was. Like uh, speed they, golf speed golf uh which yeah. is really cool i love that you kind of have like different powers for whatever character you're using and you're trying to like hurry up and try to be the first one to the hole yeah it's so fun. fun um then they, they talked a little bit about the rpg mode um yeah, leveling up your character story mode in this game they didn't go into like what the story is which we they don't really need to i don't think yeah, but not the game starts great. right uh mario gets his head beat in with a golf club and then oh. uh, Pe Peach is on a uh, revenge mission. Uh. She goes to Seattle. Oh my god! <laughs> she has a backpack. Uh, this is, and Bowser Bowser is is the one that beats him. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> what we don't know, but it's leaked, is you play as Bowser half the game. And yeah, it's, it's <laughs> this bad. game. This is game of the year material. <laughs> it, it gets intense. Trust me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm excited for this game, Sims. You're picking this up, right? Um. Yes, me. Yes, I've I've not really thought about it so much. Uh, I've not seen the trailer. I've been very busy this week. Uh, I will have a look. I'm gonna sit down and maybe catch up with some some uh, some trailers and stuff. I I'm excited about the premise of the game anyway. Like uh, playing Mario, having lots of fun. Tennis was a bit of a letdown. I remember playing the demo and it was just just I don't know. It didn't seem fun. It was it seemed a bit too complicated for a Mario game, Mario tennis game. So hopefully this can kind of like recaptures that Mario sports fan fan fandom of the of the Nintendo franchise. Like that makes sense. If that makes sense, <clears throat> you know, like people. It makes sense. Yeah, to me it makes sense. <clears throat> so yeah, I I can't really comment because I've not seen it, but it looks great. I I really look forward to it. Give Mario any kind of like sports genre game and hopefully it's a home run. I mean, look at those little khakis. Look at those little khakis he's wearing. Yeah. Actually, that's one thing I want to bring up. Random sort of side tangential note is, so they announced a couple of new characters here uh, for the roster. Some of them being sort of surprises. The main ones being King bob -omb and Charge and Chuck, which are both fantastic fun additions. However, I will say, and this is a very strange nitpick, it's unfortunate that they don't do uh, golf costumes for all the characters. Some of the characters that do have them, Daisy, Bowser, Mario, they look great. Wario's got a great one. But then Donkey Kong is just standing there in his tie with the golf clubs. Like, no. Yeah. Where's his khakis? They, put they tried putting some on, like, a shorts really tight... on Donkey Kong. He was like, nah, I'm not fucking putting those on. Well, yeah, maybe that's the canonical reason. But from, from the team, I mean, it, it makes it... It makes it seem kind of inconsistent, and it would be really fun yeah. to see King bob -omb with a really tight golf vest stretched over his body or something like that. Like, uh, come on. That's not super hard to do, and it would really give it a lot more character. So it's, it's a nitpick, but I think it's very strange that they went sort of halfsies on it. But Charge and Chuck is really fun. question. Yeah, I don't know why he they chose him. It's a little weird. I've never but heard of either of those characters. He's the guy with the the, fo the football helmet, and he, like, charges Yeah, Super Mario World. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, like, when is it going to be, like, Nintendo Golf? I, I just want to kind of pose that question. Or, like, Nintendo, the or Nintendo Kart. Yeah. yeah. When is Kart's, it going to be? Kart's where it goes first. Is it ever going to oh. be that? Is Kart, you can't change the name. You don't want to risk it. Okay. It'd be mm. too much. But Nintendo Golf could work. Yeah. Something like that. But do you think that we're going to get to that point when, like, Link's mm. going to be golfing with him? I don't think At they'll ever point. change the name. But, yeah, I think they'll be in there. Like Sweet. I can totally see Link already as a deal. My boy, my boy is uh, in Mario Kart already. Like, why can't boy? he be in this game? Link, who's your boy? Yeah, my boy Link. Your boy? Uh, well, he's he's my boy from Smash. He's my I boy. Mean, I didn't Smash. know you two were tight like that. All right. Oh, uh, dude, me and Link, we go we go way back. We go back to 2001 in Melee. You know what I mean? Oh wow, it's a long time ago. Uh, let's get into the Dark Pictures anthology. Uh, I watched like half the trailer. I kind of just clicked off it for a while. I see it's not much. Yeah, I'm like I'm fucking out. Uh. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Everybody, Daniel, I mean, you were watching the trailer yesterday. Are you were like narrating the trailer? Yeah. You, said, you said it looks like predators hunting you in the game. Yeah, it it does. really does look like predators hunting you in the game. Like this might be a predator game secretly. Uh, Tucker, have you played the other da dark picture anthology games? Nope. And no. I 
Didn't no realize interest. there was a trailer coming out. I mean, it's very strange that, like, I remember those being announced initially. It's like, oh, you know, it's an anthology horror series. They're going to be releasing sort of episodically. They're a little bit shorter. They're focused on co-op. I'm like, oh, okay. Interesting concept. First one comes out. People are, like, mixed on it. It doesn't get a lot. I, but there was a second one. I, don't, I didn't hear anyone talk about that. I didn't hear anyone talk about this trailer. Um, I hope it's good. Then people like it. But, man, do these games just not get the coverage? Maybe they deserve. I, I, can't, I couldn't really say. They're good to find. Like, I like them. But originally, I, I was very excited about this whole thing with uh, just because I loved Until Dawn so much. But yeah, uh, I, I have that was one of the first games I platinumed. Very solid game. Me too. It was actually my first platinum. Love that game. Anyways, uh, uh, yeah, it's just the quality has kind of gone down <laughs> with uh, sure. the, the two Dark Picture anthology games. Uh, I actually liked the first one somewhat. I didn't beat the second one yet. Maybe I'll go back and do that soon. I like how they get the high level actors though for this. It's, well, it, uh, I, what I will say about the games is there's a good level of production to those games too. Like the yeah. games, look, those games look good. Little Hope last year, no one talked about that game looked awesome. It so, really Danny, let's let's talk about the setting a little bit. It looks like we're cave diving in here. There's some weird yeah. temple shit going on. It does look like predators don't do you? Are we excited? I'm about not this? sure where it is. It kind of looks like maybe in Africa, like yeah, northern just, Africa like area, a, a random cave desert type thing. Yeah. Um, I I want to know what I, what what was the release for the actual trailer? Uh, May twenty seventh. So next later. week we'll know. Yeah, actually, what the game's gonna be. Um, I mean, it's just I, gonna be the simple. You know, you're walking in different sections. You're picking shit up. You're looking at it, and yeah. You know, and I mean, it's gonna be similar. On. Like I, I I just really like the uh, the idea and how these games play and stuff. I don't know. Ashley Tisdale's fine. So why not? Is she she hasn't been in anything in like ten years. We have no idea. Yeah, she was. She was in she was in uh oh. Scary Movie Five, which was like eight years ago, seven years she was ago. She's in Scary Movie Five, really? <laughs> yeah, she's like the main character. Okay, wow. Bad movie. Bad That's movie. Something. That's something. Sims, you look just shocked about all this. What's up? Is she high school musical? Yeah, there you go. The blonde. High school one. musical and uh Zach and Cody. Back in the day. I I watched high school musical. Still holds up. Wow. Congratulations. Still holds up. Still holds Very up. proud of you. It, it, it never held up to begin with. And, Ooh. and may I add, still know the words. Okay. That's the first one. Sounds what like the first one. Like all Do you mean to say about the video Most game that we're the, discussing? Most of the first one. What video game? Exactly. This is High School Musical podcast. You know, sorry, uh, we I'm plan on doing a musical here. episode of this show one day. Uh, we oh, have spoken for like about it. two we hours. Yeah, we spoke about it quite a bit. It's gonna happen one day. Tucker, you can come on that episode if you would like. Okay. Uh, you got to get ready to right. solo though. Okay. Anyways, boys, that's it for Dark Pictures Anthology. We don't need to talk about it anymore. We'll see more on May twenty seventh. Next up, next gen versions of Grand Theft Auto Five will be released on November eleventh. Rockstar also said it will have more fun surprises for the 20th anniversary of GTA 3, which is this year. Hmm. Guys, Grand Theft Auto 5 coming out again. Third time. No I'm way. Gonna... Yeah, there you go. Tucker, this is probably the only Grand Theft Auto game you've seen in your lifetime. It's... <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's the only one I've put a, a significant amount of time into. I played a good amount of the online with my friends. Never really got into the single player, but uh, I mean, it's kind of crazy that this game is a still going b one of the first games that was announced remember at the playstation uh thing they had hey a first big game gta 5 again fuck off like remember that rockstar yeah. logo popping yeah. up in the oh that was so everyone's unloved. body oh, but the, the thing nothing. is i'm very confused about this like why didn't this come out alongside the consoles like they have clearly been working on this probably since those consoles were announced because i knew they were going to keep making this game because it was it's the second best game selling game of all time and uh what are they adding like what what warrants this extra year of development since the new consoles come it's out? probably just, a small confused. team to be honest it's sure pro it's probably not like a gta Star 5 like an game. indie game yeah, that little indie game GTA Five. Yeah, uh, it's probably just there. There's the main team, Rockstar North, is definitely working on a new game. Hundred percent. There's sure. no way they're not. So yeah. this is probably just a small team doing it. But like, it's just like Skyrim. They they're gonna put it on everything that they can. Like GTA Five is just a monster of a game. Like it just it is. It is. 
I'm with you, but like I really don't get this one when we see so many games now. Like Last of Us just got an update with 60 frames per second. Why can't you just do that with GTA, the PS4 version yeah. of, and Xbox One version of GTA? You know, it's why are we putting out a whole another version of this? Like, what's there gonna be like three more strands of grass or whatever the fuck on the ground? Like, who cares? You know, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, it's gonna be at least 60 frames. It's gonna sure. maybe have I'm sure like, like, HDR now, something like that. HDR. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's still not gonna look like. You know, I mean, it's gonna look real good. Though. It's gonna look real game, good, but like, it's the not, game already looks real good. It's still gonna just like not be as good looking as you know brand new games coming out. What about the load game. times? What if they? What if those load times are significant? Because the load times in that oh, game. Oh, but then you don't get to look at the pictures. The, yeah, yeah, that's true. The, the best part of GTA Five. The load yeah. times, especially for online, that that would be the main one. That will bring a lot of people back as well. Because yeah. um, if you if you like to play Grand Theft Auto, especially nowadays as well, them them load times are painful or oh, painful sure, yeah. like my like yeah like i like to put it on ever so often and it's just like put a cowl on read read a novel <laughs> like you know what i mean like chapters. <laughs> no, oh, no read the book the whole damn <laughs> fucking book mate <laughs> So yeah, it, then that would be the main benefit, especially for online as well. Like, come and get in, get out, dead quick. That'll bring back a, a whole long, a whole big, massive audience, and and it's it all boils down to one thing, and that's money. Like that game makes money or every day, like a significant amount of money. So they're gonna keep yeah. it alive. They're gonna keep it alive, and I'm still shocked that Tucker was allowed to play this game when he was eight years old. Oh no! I didn't play it till like, probably 2016 or something like that. That's crazy. I just because I didn't really give a shit, but my friend like bought it for me. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll I'll like make a stupid looking character, get a car, and like crash into stuff. Sure, why not? And that that's my experience with the Grand Theft Auto series. I remember it's not really queuing up for this game. Tea, but... I remember queuing up. <laughs> hey, not, not my old. fault. You're an old fart. <laughs> <laughs> this game. <laughs> this game was a huge deal when it was in 2014 when it was coming out. Oh my oh god! My this god! This game was huge. <laughs> huge. Yeah, Tucker, you might not remember the year 2013. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> My memory doesn't go back that far. You know, diapers, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. kindergarten. You know, guys, he was only like 13 then. I'm sure he doesn't remember yeah. the launch of DTA. <laughs> yeah. Was... Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I'm going to play it a third time, even though I was just talking shit. Are you really? Are you going to buy it? Uh, you going to oh, buy it? Yeah, yeah, I will. Oh, my Daniel, God. I'm okay. all over this. Don't worry. I might buy <laughs> this sweet. Is this? Oh, there you oh go. I, I only know one person that's ever bought that game. Uh, it's my brother. There's a lot of like hard. multiplayer that's a hard achievements, one. right? Yeah, my, it's wow. the, the level 100. No, it's that's level 100. Commitment. I think that's it. Whoa. And then the, and the other one was like f uh, like five star every mission. See, I got close to the online one though because there was a way to cheese it back in the day. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, wasn't it like doing a specific thing, like killing something? Or... Yeah, there's one where you could just drive around the track over and over and you get a shit ton of XP. This is back in like. 2013 tucker was like two oh, yeah you know, exactly know. exactly uh, yeah. just born he was just born. <laughs> really learning to talk yeah <laughs> uh all right next up guys uh summer game fest is returning and will uh there will be an event on june 10th at 2 p.m eastern uh summer game fest of course it's jeff Keeley's conference thing where he brings a bunch of developers together and they announce shit it's gonna be fun uh sony's going xbox going uh i don't think nintendo was gone but uh nope. Yeah, but I like think the Ubisoft only major there. publisher not. Yeah, going. they were like the only yeah. one. There's a lot of guys there. Hopefully, some cool shit will be announced. This is kind of kicking off E3, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of days before E3 starts. So. What was your your joke, Tucker? I saw it. Give me the joke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Collectively as a community, and I really hope this catches on. I got like nine likes on my tweet, which I'm proud of. Uh, can we call the Summer Game Fix Fest kickoff pre three? I mean, pre come on. It seriously is. It's just two days before. It's it's loaded into everything. Pre That's three. Great. Pre three. Jeff Keighley, hire me. So I, I don't money. I don't cost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Need you on the PR team for this. Uh okay, guys, what what are we expecting here? Should we be expecting big announcements here? Like, especially from Sony, who's not involved in E3. I'm thinking maybe they could bring out something. But again, I'm only expecting like one thing from each of these uh publishers. I wouldn't expect much from Xbox. They're gonna save all their stuff. For yeah, their I, I don't I don't even understand why Xbox would be a part of this when their conference is two days later. So yeah, I, I maybe couldn't... this could be uh psychonauts. Maybe that they could do that there I mean, and just kind of have like a double fine, little double fine thing there or something. I'd consider this like, you know, when you go to a nice restaurant and they give you like appetizers and it's not, um, it's like, you, it's like a little, like little taste, little look, little taste of like, you know, like what's to come. I think we'll get some little nice little announcements, you know, just a wet whistles. 
know what I mean? And then You're calling Summer Game Fest the breadsticks of you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Breadsticks. Perfect. That's what, what they what are. What just came to my head? What just came to my head? Hors d'oeuvres. Last Hors year, who really liked Jeff Keighley last year? Me and Connor talked a lot about this. Who I really liked Division? Activision. Activision's probably going to be four, right? Oh, Activision, yeah, good point. Activision's going to be real big at this. What, like yeah. Crash and Tony Hawk? They did Crash, like Tony yeah. Hawk. There was there was something else. What am I forgetting? Uh, it was Crash, Tony Hawk. Yeah, there was like a, one other thing that they did last year. Was it that shitty mobile Maybe game? Maybe it was Call of Duty. Maybe it was Call of Duty. Um, but yeah, they 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 really liked Jeff Keighley last year. So um, I, I like that I, idea, Daniel. I think that Activision's going to be. This is where it's going to be. Spyro Four. Give it to me. Maybe. Maybe, Crash maybe, maybe. five. Nice, <laughs> nice try, but Spyro four. Let's go, baby. I do Six. think um, this. I can't wait for this week. I'm so excited. Like it's such a good week as well because you got you got pre three. Hey, took it. Um, hey, oh, it's catching on. Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. E three. The twelfth. That Friday. You've got eleventh. You know, for us soccer fans, the Euros are kicking off. Oh, oh baby, man, this is, this is a you don't understand. This is like the weekend of like dreams for Steve. Like, I'm gonna be not sleeping, playing Ratchet in the day, I'm gonna watch it E3 in the evenings. Oh my god, he killed it with the soccer thing, but it's still exciting nonetheless. You yeah. watch men in pants like punch each other in the face. I mean, they're wearing shorts, all right. I'm <laughs> down there, but <laughs> no, I watched the men uh... in pants. <laughs> okay. Anything else we want to say on Summer Games Fest? I think we're all pretty excited. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully we get some cool shit announced here. I'm expecting just more E3. Though. I mean, if you if you look at all it, in the grand scheme of things, this is just more announcements around the time of E3. an E3 conference, right? Jeff Keighley is just taking E3 and spreading it over a long time. I think, of course, the main announcements will be concentrated around the actual ESA's showcases that are planned and, and synchronized and all that. But the fact that Jeff Keighley has the industry power to grab everyone and say hey no announce some stuff for me too it means mm-hmm. we might even get a little bit more it might it might take a little bit away from what would have been in those conferences initially but the fact that we're getting them all and it's spreading them over a longer period of time will probably I think he said like a, a month good balance is that what yeah. you're saying and it's uh, the kickoff now? i think he said is two hours long which is yeah. okay pretty long but uh we'll see we'll see how it goes well i think the game awards last year were like four. Oh, <laughs> Way oh long. yes yeah. oh yes they were <laughs> what, what do we think that sony's gonna show um, it's a good question. Depends yeah. if they plan on doing their own thing throughout the summer at some point. Yeah, but I, I, I kind of beat my guess. They're doing their own state mm-hmm. of play somewhere in July, so I wouldn't expect nothing too big. But who knows? I don't know. Maybe Kojima's game pops up here. Who knows? Ooh. I think Kojima will Kojima. be on the Xbox. Oh, is that the is that the is that the Xbox thing? Is just we've acquired Kojima Productions and they're making a game for us. Or something. <laughs> no, it's just. On the Xbox stage, it'd be Phil Spencer with Kojima in a box. We've kidnapped Kojima. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no, when you said... Snake. Yeah, well, when you said with a box... Give us a million dollars. <laughs> uh, when you said box, I was thinking the solid snake box. Like, it, yeah, just, exactly. he'd be walking in it. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. It sounds like some crazy stuff he'd do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, our last news story. Deep Silver has announced that Free Radical Design is reforming and working on a new Time Splinters game. Time Splitters. Splitters, Splitters yeah. not Splinters. Splitters. <laughs> uh, yeah. Guys, I don't know anything about Time Splitters, I'll be honest. Uh, not very excited about this. Um, you know, go THQ Nordic. They're my best friends. Uh, dude, well, it's Embracer Group now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My bad. They THQ Nordic's just the developing studio. But... My bad. Um, yeah, I mean, they own me. They they bought me. They bought the rights to me. So uh, I wanted to make sure. Are, are they, pu- they going to publish easy. you soon? I'm one of the I'm one of the what 125 games developed. That's me. I'm one of them. Um. Uh. Yeah. This is uh, interesting. I mean, Time Splitters was huge. Both games are huge. Like the what was it PS2 era. So uh, it's it's nice to see it come back. Like I'm always happy when things come back. You know. Has we'll anyone ever played is. Time Splitters here? Yeah, Tim. Uh, I remember what oh, you have. Okay, I remember playing uh, one of them on the original Xbox uh, on a demo disc. They had like a. What demo are they? Why it. are they so beloved? I don't understand it. They're like just an old like first person shooter era. Mm. Golden Eye game, like Golden yeah. Eye four, four, four player split screen. Yeah, perfect dark yeah. game. So I, I, era. I yeah, I remember playing one of them on the PlayStation Two, and I, I remember having a lot of fun with it. I, that's all I can really remember. So I don't know. Just to bring back 
nostalgia. I don't know. I really don't know. Like people always say, time splitters, but it, I, people always say Golden Eye, don't they? Everyone's like, oh, remake Golden Eye, or I don't know. But yeah, it's it's a nice little announcement. In the middle of the night, For me anyway. It was middle of my. I woke up to that news. So yeah, it's, we'll see in a couple of years. See what they can do. <clears throat> THQ Nordic. I don't know. THQ Nordic. <clears throat> it's a big week for them this week, next week, because... Embracer Group. Okay. <laughs> Buy a mutant. You clarify. That's what they hired Daniel for, is to correct people. <laughs> <laughs> so Buy a Mutant's coming out next yeah. week, and, like, mm -hmm. I've been... Every game I've seen THQ Nordic put out, I mean, they've all been, like, remasters, haven't they? I think they put... Embracer Group. I'm gonna kill him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've obviously got uh, Destroy Humans... Uh, Kingdom of Amilar, Amilar, and they've all been all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, this is a big moment for them. I think next week, and it looks you think this is like yeah, a, one of their first big games in a while, yeah. And I, I it looks very looks interesting, cool. yeah. It looks like, cool. I'm definitely like waiting for reviews kind of before I like want to purchase it or anything. Yeah. Um, also, Natalie, I mean, it's been hyped up for years. I want to say, Natalie, she's yeah. watching, and I don't think. Silent Hill is going to be shown because Konami said they're not going to be at E3. So yeah, I'm well, I'm E3 sorry. not being at E3 doesn't mean they can't be with at something somebody's conference, some yeah. Games Fest, yeah, or or at really? something else, yeah. I think maybe if if uh, Jeff Keighley comes in with his big swinging industry dick and he's like, "Hey, Konami, announce uh, the new Silent Hill, Hill game," boom, at, <laughs> at, yeah, exactly. At our at oh, my that conference, and that and that's a that's something for him to really grab onto, like, hey. It was announced here first. That's how important my conference is. Whew. That's a that's a good idea, actually. I'm Hire sorry, me, Jeff Keighley. I'm sorry. You have to. We'll be big. Yeah, have to see well, so, big can we can dick. we just the big industry swinging dick? That's what you just said, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what he's got. That's okay. what he's got. <laughs> Did I stutter? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> is this move really on? <laughs> I love you. I j I'm so <laughs> glad I met this kid. Like I, I, oh man. Continue. Wow. I'll con I'll continue saying what I need to to bring the energy here. Oh, I love this kid. <laughs> okay. Anything else on time splitters? Uh, I, we won't yeah, see it for a while. Uh, yeah. Sure. Maybe. Yeah. They're just making the studio, or they maybe they've made it in the past month or this year. So a, who knows how long it's been going? You know. It's a good announcement to make though. Do you know what I mean? Like, Time Splitters is coming back. And then go ro just go silent for years and years and years. And then we'll all forget about it. And then yeah. they'll announce it and it'd be great. And yeah, like, I think this is sometimes like people like announce games too early, going back to Elder Scrolls, because we're not getting that till 2 30, 20 30. Yeah. Um, and this is like, this is a great, like, oh, Time Splitters coming. Bye. I feel like the Cyberpunk thing. Yeah. That went well. I don't know if it'd be that long. <laughs> well, Cyberpunk was a good game. All right, fuck off. Uh, all right, that it is was. it. Thank you for the news. We will now move on to what we have been playing. Uh, boys, who wants to start? Sims, start with you. What you've been playing, bud? Um, so we finished Resident Evil. I think the last time I spoke to you last week, we'd finished the second biome. Um, and then I said I really enjoyed the second biome, and then we went through the third and the fourth. Um, and unfortunately, like, I think it just slowly started to decline. Like the whole game mm. just, for me, just started to just, just a complete, just a drop in, in, in enjoyment. Like I did not enjoy it after being like, honestly, petrified of the second biome, like really made me feel really uncomfortable, made me feel things that most games have never made me feel. Uh, but I don't know the, the characters that I didn't find interest in. The story seemed com 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 convoluted. Unvoluted. That's the yeah. words. I'm forgetting words. All right, it's been a long week. Did so, you like the third uh, area at all? I mean, Natalie played that bit. We played it together. It, okay. seemed, it was not. It was, everything seemed a bit too rushed and quick. Like I don't know. It just seemed like they gave you these four areas. I didn't like the way they did the four area four area thing, and then. You went to the first one, it was quite long, and I was like, oh, this is this is standard Resident Evil, you know, go and get this, to go and yeah. get that, to come and get this, to unlock that, to do this, to then, you know, you fight the big boss. And then the second one was like, there was a bit of a puzzle, 
But it, and then I was surprised how quickly it ended. Then the third one was just effectively a boss battle. And then the fourth one was just this... Also meh. effectively a boss battle. But I kind of like the fourth area, which was the stronghold. I think that was a pretty interesting area. The, the area was, was fine. It was definitely the most action area. Um, so I'll I'll just... Factory? No, the factory is the fifth area. The stronghold? Oh, okay. oh no, 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 no. What's the stronghold? The stronghold is the fourth, the stronghold's the fourth that... area. I don't want to spoil it too much. That's the one where you have to go get the fourth flask. Isn't that the factory? Sims, 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 Sims no. memory's trying to work. Yeah, he's, so Connor, we just talked about this yesterday. The fourth, well. yeah, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> okay, uh, well, okay. So I'm effectively thinking, I forgot about that area completely. Yeah. The fourth, I'm thinking it's of, very, like, very of very Heisenberg's good. area. And it yeah. completely just, like, lost me. It was That's only the like the yeah. area, the factory the visually was great, but then once mm -hmm. you got into the nitty gritty paths and like it just got really convoluted. It's such a maze, man. I honestly, we, we were, we, we, me and Natalie wasted 45 minutes trying to figure it out, like trying to get back to the elevator. We could not figure it out. Sure, so yeah. It just got so frustrating. And then it just it got a bit we and then it got really fucking weird after during the, the boss battle. I won't, I won't spoil it. I got you guys have already covered that. I just want to give my thoughts. It just got. I was like, it goes crazy at the end. Yeah, it just it just yeah. loses the plot, and then and then it it kept going and going and going, and I was like, and then it tried tried to explain this story in a way that just didn't make sense. To a point where, like, if you have to finish it, if you have to finish a video game and go, what, and then have to watch a video. Shout out to Gamespot, did a great video on what the fuck actually happened. It's not good. I mean, the end. I the ending, the very last ending was interesting, and you know I'll sit here and moan about Resident Evil Village. But as soon as Resident Evil Nine comes out, are we gonna play it? Because it's interesting. I don't, it just became. I really. I do want to say this. No spoilers with this, but no there's like the big lore dump room. Yeah, I think me and Connor mentioned this last week. That lore dump room, I think, was the best part of the game. Yeah, personally. I think we mentioned this on the spoiler cast, but yeah, the, yeah, there's some really interesting lore that you get in like the last couple hours that I thought was actually really good. But yeah, I'm I'm with you, Sims, on like the the factory section of the game is really bad. The Lord, oh, the the you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, with, yeah. With there's the, a very specific room photos, where it's just yeah. documents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, that so was if, probably my favorite part. If I'll go into my thing, I have only been playing Resident Evil Village, and I beat it last night. I beat it just before midnight last night, um, and. I, the only uh, Resident Evil games I played before that were 2 Remake and 4. I played 4 earlier this year. Um, and it's interesting to see kind of how this is a combination of 2 Remake, 7, and 7 sort of more modern stuff, and 4 because it's a lot more action-heavy stuff. The puzzles are a little bit lighter. Um, but I enjoyed it. I think it's solid overall. Uh, spo spoilers, which we're not going to get into. The ending is a little weird. I, I do agree that that final cutscene is like, oh, maybe there's potential here. But... Um, you get locked into a thing at the end, like the last hour and a half of the game. You're like, okay, well, that's a little bit weird. Completely shifts it up. But on the whole, I think uh, Dimitri's Castle is, is great. I think the village is fantastic. I loved going back there. And now there's like new things to explore. And they sort of reframe things. Add new, add new items every time you go back to it. That was really fun. There's also a lot of extra exploration you can do. I don't know if you guys, if there's a boat that you can go yeah, on. There's extra areas to visit. Yeah, we did Yeah. Which is fantastic. Like, oh, there's extra areas to go to. They are entirely optional. Love that. Um, and then Beneviento's uh, little house. Cool puzzle. The third area. I think the weakest. I preferred Heisenberg's uh, factory over that. But um, it, it's just weirdly inconsistent that all the areas are so, so different. And I think for me, the strength of Resident Evil is the RPD, uh, you know, the uh, police station. It's, it's like, it's... Uh, Dimitri's castle. It's those areas where it's really confined and rooms, every room means something. But when you get to areas that there are houses that have nothing in them, or there's just the places like, okay, well, that's just wasted space then. Like, trim it down. Resident Evil works best when it's at its core. And it's interesting mm -hmm. that they sort of, sort of try to meet a middle ground that I don't really know if worked all the way. But on the whole, it's a very good game. It, it has some issues, but it's super high production value, and it makes me excited to see what they do in the future. 
that, yeah, it that's only feels like I've been different playing. teams made the different areas you know like sure talking yeah to one another they almost all feel like different games if you look at them like and the more i've been talking about this the more i've been realizing that uh but yeah i'm with you on the the open area was actually my favorite going and finding all those uh the gold treasures like i still can't remember the name of them i know there's a specific name but uh yeah, I thought those were the most interesting part. When it became like a Far Cry game, I actually got like super into it all of a sudden when, when that area opened up. And then, yeah, the castle part was definitely the best part of the game overall. Most classic uh, Resident Evil. Sims, is there anything else you've been playing? Um, uh, just a quick one on thing. Uh, sorry, I had to um, keep sneezing. I'm obviously coming down with something. Um, I, I had every intention of like playing this game. I loved like the Resident Evil replay value, like of like, oh, now start again, but you get to have an, an, a, you get a rocket launcher or you get unlimited ammo or. Or etc etc and you know getting all the trophies but after the heisenberg and then the the end i was completely put off i just did not want to do it again i didn't want to witness the the what happened and how it tried it just it completely lost me like i i literally i was i went from oh this is great oh this is really great so this is no it just went I, I don't know. It just it was disappointing in the end, and I'm glad like I experienced it, and I, I we didn't pay too much money for it, and um I just I don't think it'd be at the end of the year. I don't think I'll be even. It won't get into top ten territory. Really, you're that yeah, we'll see. on it. That, yeah. since we all beat it, uh, you guys want to put scores on it? We haven't put scores on a game in a minute. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. I, I use a website called Backlogged, which allows you to track your games. Uh, it make, gives you lists, gives you scores, gives you a place to write reviews and stuff. I give it a, a four stars out of five, eight out of ten. I think it's a good game. It just doesn't reach those highs that I really wish it did. Um, it's For me, it's a little more consistent than uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake, where you have the great first half, but I think the first, second half is a lot weaker. Um but it doesn't reach the highs that that Resident Evil Two Remake has with the Raccoon City Police Department. So I mean, that's one of the greats. I don't yeah, think exactly. One of the grades. Exactly. Yeah. So this is it's an it's an eight out of ten. It's a very good game. But will we be talking about it at the end of the year? I don't know. We'll have to see what really combats it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Actually, I'd I'd, I'd probably give it an eight point five. Actually, I think the highs were really high for me. That whole open area and the castle were really high for me. I think I was like absolutely in love with the game at those points and then yeah once you get into the factory and some of the end game stuff it uh it, it definitely falls down a little bit but yeah i think uh at one point i said this was my favorite resident evil game but i think i was just like in the thick of it right then you know just really hooked yeah. up on it yeah uh so yeah i'd probably give it an 8.5 daniel i'm you? the exact same 8.5 i think seven's like an eight for me so um i think i think this is like i said in our spoiler thing i'll say it here i i like this better than seven so i probably say 8.5 is a pretty good spot for it tim's touching on that me and you love seven did you end up not liking this one as much as seven yeah completely like because that's that's seven i felt too seven's so much better everything just the the like the, the open world aspect of this game is good like, i really enjoyed it like when i left the biomes and i was like oh man unlock all these houses that are red they're all gonna become blue and yeah. um i was like in it i was really into that part and then i was it, as it just progressed, like I said, I just fell out of love with it. I, I will after this. We'll, I'll tell you the exact moment I could not stand this game. Sure. Um, I'd, I I want to say six, but that's unfair. Seven, I give it a seven, like because it, it it started really well. They I, they blew their load with Lady Dimitrescu completely. Yeah. Like, like they were like oh, they were like oh we're onto something here. Let's just show them everything. Lead. Oh, they literally showed you the first part of the game, except for pretty one much. one moment. They yeah. showed you every except cutscene. Pretty yeah. much the end. Yeah, and it yeah, and it was just it was just yeah, and I think they, I think in the end though as well to Lady Dimitres like they just did a dirty like she should have been the main person in the end. She should have been the main villain, and she. I wonder if they didn't realize side. what they had during development with her. Mm. You know? Mm. They so they did, did in the marketing. They did in the marketing. Yeah, they did. Certainly in the marketing, they did. Yeah. yeah. That's when they learned. <laughs> so, uh, seven. Seven it seven, is. Yeah. Capcom will now blacklist us. Thanks, Sims. Oh, uh, great. <laughs> Tucker, uh, you, you have been playing Resident Evil 7 or 8, sounds like. Uh, have you been playing anything else? I have not really. I mean, honestly, the last month or so, I've just been focusing on on fin finishing up my semester in college and uh, lots of other stuff. Mostly watching movies. I watched. I've watched like 
18 or 19 horror movies since summer started like a week and a half ago so i've i've been busy with that and playing resident evil village um but i i do want to get back into playing games a lot a lot more now that it is the summertime for me so i don't know if you guys got game recommendations and stuff i, I i'll play yeah, see, you should go back and play anything. seven if, i i definitely will yeah, yeah i have it through the ps plus collection it's downloaded on my playstation um and i know it's not very long one thing i will say Regardless of our thoughts about the ending of eight, at least it's not very long. I mean, you beat it under ten hours. I, I yeah. beat it in like uh, nine fifty nine, eight eight, or like I think it was eight fifty nine for me uh, in terms of runtime. So sh- short game. So at least it didn't ha- like drag completely. Yeah, go back and play seven since you're showing a horror yeah. too. That one's definitely way heavier on the scares yeah. than uh, mm-hmm. eight was. Uh, so is that all you've been playing then? Yeah, no, I don't have more to talk about, but that's okay, fine. Cool. We'll talk about movies. I mean, you know, Spider Man. I got fun. Whatever. Movies, yeah. And we'll move on to what I've been playing. I've been playing Mass Effect. I had yes. platinum the first Mass Effect. Yes. The crazy. Came out on Friday, you crazy son of a bitch. I know. I know. There's a lot, a lot of hours, a lot of game there. You know, it's uh, it's very fun though. Uh, but yeah, Mass Effect one. Uh, where do you guys want to start? This, the story still holds up. Well. Uh, Sam scared. It's a question, but so I started it um, straight after I finished Resident Evil because I was itching, itching. I really wanted to just try it, just to see what it felt like, if you want the truth. And um, so I started number one. Never played number one, and um, yeah, it, it definitely has a, an aged feel to it. Um, yeah, I I can't remember what I've chosen. Or who I, I I'm a male shepherd. Uh, I started with a pistol and a sniper rifle. That might help you choose. Uh, do you have powers? I got. Is it sabotage or something? Sabotage. Oh, so did you choose a tech one? Maybe something like uh, that. That might have been what you chose. Uh, okay. Um. I. Uh, and the, yeah, like just firing and shooting the guns. I got. To, um. It felt fine. I'm. I can't wait to play it. I'm. I'm literally. I. I've. My whole week, my whole from this moment onwards, I'm just I've turned off all my social media. I'm literally just gonna focus on playing that game. I'm really excited to get into it. Now I'm I'm really excited to listen to what you're gonna say about it. Yeah, as far as combat goes, I mean it it feels better than it originally did. Certainly, they try to make it feel more like Mass Effect two and three as far as like that close up angle and like you you know you're going to cover a little bit more and stuff like that. It still doesn't feel great. It, it I mean it's just. You know, it's a it's a game from 2007. It's a it, it never felt good even in 2007. The the cover system is very wonky. The shooting, it's fine. It's it, it's doable. You know, but uh, y- you really don't play this game for the combat. But there is a lot of it, which does get annoying at points. Were you gonna say something? I was gonna say the the the, the cover system was very jarring. Yeah, it's wonky, bro. You have to yeah, walk up <laughs> to it. You have to walk. Up yeah, you to have to it. walk up to it, and you have to get in like the perfect spot yeah, for it. It's, yeah. it. it's very weird. And I was like, but oh. yeah, uh, th- that's pretty much my main negative point with it. Is you know the combat still doesn't feel great, and there's the walking, but everything else, man, still really holds up. The the story still really holds up. Uh, just the dialogue in general is so good in this game. Like the amount of lore you get from just uh talking, having a conversation with just one character is crazy. Like. The, they'll tell you one thing about a mission or something or about like uh this different alien species and then you could just dive into it and mm. keep asking them questions all of a sudden i'm having like a 30 minute conversation with this random alien just learning about his society it's it's insane uh <clears throat> I, I think uh a lot of it that stuck out to me too was how much this game sets up too which i did not realize uh, playing this you know 10 years ago or whatever uh there's a lot of like server stuff which is interesting i know daniel you're a big fan of two as well i don't oh, know yeah. if you ever noticed this stuff or if like this was like newly added maybe i never played any of the dlcs but uh, i don't remember stuff there a ton about one to be honest yeah there's a bunch I remember of stuff the I sarin stuff but that's kind of hit is the dlc yeah. have you is the dlc just like in with i know it's in there so is it just like in the story in the right places at the right time yeah so there's uh one dlc called bring down the sky that was just like a, a basic here's another mission or like this random planet you can go to that has like three side quests as well uh and that lasts you i don't know maybe like three four hours uh and then there was another one called pinnacle station which was just a wave mode which is one i did play back in the day but that was just a wave mode you didn't really get any more story to it oh, that's the one that's a... not here right that's the one that's not here yeah exactly but the other one is here but yeah uh the game's still great, man. Uh, just walking around the Normandy again. I, I I got fucking chills when I first started walking around there again, just talking to everyone. My, my buddy Rex Garris. They're, they're, they're so Rex, cool. I hang out. Yeah, man. And, and just uh, going through the story again was uh, very nostalgic for me. I'm, you know, I was 
I, I used to love Knights of the Old Republic back in the day. And then I remember this coming out. And then I, all I heard was like, oh, this is the guys that made Knights of the Old Republic. And then I was like, oh, I got to fucking play this. And uh, so, yeah, it's very uh, near and dear to my heart, this series. Any questions? Uh, so have you even dipped your toes into two yet? Are you no, just gonna go yeah, straight I into literally, two? I literally just platinum three right before we started recording. Oh, okay. Uh, the first one right before we started recording. Yeah. Uh, as far as the platinum trophy goes, I uh, it, it was very not simple, but like you just had to make sure you do the, like there was a bring each character on five missions, right? So you just got to make sure you bring in your characters on all these different missions as you're doing them. Uh, same with combat, it would be like you know use this ability twenty five times or something like that, and then you just gotta make sure you're bringing the right squad mate with you to use that ability if your character doesn't have it, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to play two now just to feel it, you know, because I remember the gameplay leap from one to two, just the, how two is so much more refined and better than uh, one was. So I'm very excited to go back and feel that. Uh, it, just this collection though, overall, man, it's such a great thing. Just even the main menu is great. It's right there. Yeah, like how that. does the, how and, does that menu work with selecting the games? Yeah, so like you can't really see it from right there, but the main see. menu pops up. Yeah, it just says Mass Effect Legendary Edition. You press start, then it's just simply one, two, and three, and and then uh, okay. now you it has over. your save over to two. Yeah, and I can't wait to experience that with just going through all three games. It's still just the fact that uh, y- your decisions and your choices carry over from game to game is such a cool idea, and I wish more yeah. developers use that. Like, plan out a trilogy and just give me that again, because it is such a cool idea, and I can't believe Mass Effect has been the only one to do it. It's, it's, yeah, it was so it was so cool when they when they announced that. They're like, yeah, yeah, you can carry everything over. Yeah, your it wasn't really everything, over, but. You know. it, well, it's crazy replaying the first one and seeing like, oh, I remember how this decision affects, you know, the outcome of this decision, you know, that doesn't happen until the third game or whatever, you know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it's just crazy that no developer has ever done that again. So, uh, sorry, I had to dip two secs. Um, Not good. Mass Effect 2, is that, are you, stop, are you starting that now? Have you always... Hell yeah, I'm starting that now. It's like one of my favorites. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I, I'm so excited to jump into 2 what, now. What did you need to do for the plot? yeah so i was just talking about this a little bit Sorry. Uh, you, you, you pretty much just uh no you're fine you need to do five missions with each of your squad mates so you just got to make sure you're switching your squad so mates in and out right okay yeah and then um there's ones for like do this ability 25 times and there's one for like each ability so you just you can use your squad mates abilities yeah. 25 times on things it was a pretty easy to get just as long as you do them over time other than that it was an easy plat you know basic do the story stuff complete majority of the game that's not that hard uh you just do there's not that many side quests in the first game you know a lot of people have like a, a misconception about the first game that it's like this giant rpg with so much to do and you'll be in it for hours and hours obviously you could wrap that whole game up in probably 60 hours i know that's still big but it, you know, it's not nearly. It's like it's not Persona RPG, Five. Right? Do you need to yeah, do it's like not Persona all, Five? Do you need to do all the side quests? For, does every character have their own side quests? No, not in this one. There's only three uh, character side quests, which are really good in the first one. But, yeah, you're talking uh, about the loyalty missions that really got big in two. Yeah, that that comes <laughs> okay. into play in two. But there's there's they have those, but they're not to the extent that they are in two. But there are things you can dig in there there's a lot you can miss in this game you got to make sure you're talking to everyone uh because not only is the normandy a hub but the citadel is a hub as well so you got to make sure you're going around after every main mission and talking to everyone again because different dialogue options will pop up and that'll give you different missions etc very good game though mass effect one great soundtrack too they oh, nail yeah. that like space vibe you know it's crazy can't wait for mass effect's, mass effect's great it's so good man <laughs> just the lore in general like when, when i'm sitting there i'm having a conversation with this alien for 30 minutes and i'm just like captivated by it you know i'm like oh holy shit that's so you know they're doing something right there exactly the the writing in this game is top notch oh, well, did you uh play as paragon or renegade uh paragon of course of course, of course. you have exactly. to is it, you have to max that out for a trophy. I swear I've seen that. You do, yeah. You have to max that out. There's a way to cheese it, uh, but it's very easy to get maxed out Paragon in, in this game as long as you're picking it every time, pretty much. Like, there's a few times where I was like, eh, I wouldn't say that option, so I went with the Renegade one just because it was funny or whatever. But yeah, very good, very good. Tucker, have you ever played Mass Effect? Uh, I have the first and second games on <clears throat> Steam. Um, I played probably the first few hours of the first game, and I think it was a lot. It was a 
like five years ago that I tried it, and I just I don't think at the time I was I had the mental capacity to realize what was going on. I never played a game with like commanding other people like that before, so I was a little bit confused and overwhelmed with the with the skill of it, and and it was a little bit slow. So I was just like, oh, what, what the hell's going on here? Uh, but knowing how I I'm a huge story guy in games, and just the idea of the the uh, progress carrying over choices really mattering through the whole trilogy that's fan like that's fascinating that's what games can do in a way that other mediums can't and with the legendary collector uh legendary edition i don't really know what it's called but um legendary edition yeah ma maybe i'll pick it up i i don't know if i have the time for three long ass games like this but um if i if i'm really craving a long epic story and i know how much people are enjoying them right now and it's great to have them back in the zeitgeist in that way so I might give it a shot. I might give it a shot. I'll let you know. I would yeah, highly I would, recommend I, playing the whole trilogy. I, I would kill to be in your shoes of never having played these and having this collection. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and I have no idea what happens to them because I don't know the stories of them. Good. So if there's like Maybe a big twist. Way, spoil good. Well, I know people complain about the end of three. That's like the one thing I know about the series. It's still a great game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know the twists. If there are twists that are like are classic twists. So that's kind of exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one bad thing I did want to point out about Mass Effect One is the uh, the random planets you can go explore. They they put these in to try to make the game feel bigger. They are awful. <laughs> like these play, you could just randomly go land on a planet, and there's like probably fifty of them that you can just go land on, and they're all just like it feels like No Man's Sky, where everything's just like slightly different, or there's, it's just like a different color, sure. and, and like the rooms are exactly the same, the buildings are exactly the same, and then they're just like you know turned around in a different angle. It's it's crazy, but uh yeah, still a great game though, Tucker. Go experience these games. It's I'll magic. give it a shot. They'll be like a fucking side quest that like you think is just meaningless, and then that decision will come back to haunt you in like the third game. It's insane. That's pretty okay. cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, but it is pretty cool. Daniel, what have you been playing? Uh, so I haven't really played a lot really this week. Kind of after Resident Evil, so I just I, I went back to Returnal. I just keep going back to just kind of do a couple runs or whatever. Uh, I beat the second act, so technically that's the the game. I did see credits and everything, um, but there's like a little bit more to it. There's like a third act you can do. Uh, so I think that's just kind of get back to the end boss, probably beat it again. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit different. I don't want to spoil anything. I think the end boss is a little different, but um, I, I will say like this game, the first like three areas are way harder than the last three areas. I just want to say that. Like mm. one, two, and three as like a ramp up. Like three is just the hardest area in the whole game for me. Um, I breezed through area four and area five took like a couple nights. And then area six, I pretty much just breezed through. It got to the final boss like every time I go in there. Um, I don't know why it's that <laughs> so hard in the beginning. I don't know. But yeah, well, that's how many there are. There's six. Yeah. What, what were you saying, saying Tucker? Tucker? Oh, I just think the difficulty curve. Because it's very strange, considering that, like, from my perspective, I have not played the game, and I'm really just hearing, hearing people talk about it. It's like, oh, man, this game is hard from a lot of people at, at the beginning. And it's interesting to hear that, you know, maybe it's your skill level, maybe it's the uh, the, the caps on your, on your equipment or something. Maybe you, like, sort of max out halfway through. But it's interesting to see that it kind of dip, or it, it um, peaks in the middle. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I don't think the game is as hard as people think it is. Sure um personally uh i think that yeah that third area and like some of the bosses are difficult obviously they're going to be hard um the game is hard because of its length i think that's why people think it's hard it takes yeah. so long to get to some of these bosses that mm -hmm. it's just time consuming that's really like i think the thing that people get hold, held up on really um yeah like <laughs> that final boss was a joke i'm just gonna say it like oh, it was a punch it was a he was a punk man. I I, I like a I punk the, bitch. the the first the first time I went into the the last area, I got to him one try, uh, and then almost beat him. And then I went there the next time, and beat him on the second try. So man, it was just like fucking shit here. That 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 final boss. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the the Act Three final boss is going to be or whatever, but like that final boss was just not hard. So are you Apparently, higher up on the game now that you beat it, or are you more lower on it? Because you were kind of mad at it this whole time. Uh, I'm mad at the rogue light aspects. Like, I, I, I still really like the game. I'll put a score on it, even though I haven't really gotten to Act Three. I did kind of, I did see credits and everything. Like, it's I think credits. it's good enough. 
I yeah, think like this game. Work. Yeah, I think the game is it, it is like could be like an, pushing the nine, but it's just I think it has way too many flaws. Plus, like I've lost some runs because of technical issues and stuff. Like I think the game's like mm. a solid eight, but could have been even better. Good start. I doubt they're going to come back to the game, but I think it is a good game. Do you think they updated at all and try to make these runs shorter, or is that just the game? Does it just have to be like that? The way they, the only way they could do it, there are these like save points or like travel points you can get as you're doing runs, and you can like teleport back to different areas. I feel like maybe put a save point there, but like they really can't do much. That's just how they 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 get there. They'd have to rebuild the game really to do that. Is what it is. Yeah. All right, you've been playing anything else? Uh, no, not really. It's really That's all I've had time for. Yeah. Um, there's what is next? I, I might play Judgment. I kind of have to look at like the release schedule. I haven't really played anything new since Village. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, Bio Mutant's coming out next week, and then other than that, it's not, not until Ratchet really. It's only three weeks yeah. away though. Yeah, yeah. That is very it's far. not far, but even all. Ratchet though, like it's gonna be like what 10 hours, you know. Yeah, that. 10 to 15, yeah. something yeah, like that. Like that. Uh, I, I think I might pick up Judgment because the, the sequel's coming out. So not on Game Pass? It is not yet. Uh, I am thinking out. there probably will. Like, uh, Judgment and Yakuza 7, like a dragon, those are not on there yet. I, I'm thinking maybe they will be I soon. I can see 7 getting dropped on Game Pass at E3. Yeah, something that'd like be a that. pretty, big, yeah, that'd pretty big deal if they said, like, hey, look, the entire Yakuza saga is now available on Game Pass. Yeah. I think they, they sort of did that when they were announcing, boom, 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 all these Yakuza games are coming. But now, the big one that everyone enjoyed so much last year is is on Game Pass. And like, you know, that, some people, that was like one of the games of the year. So it's having that on there is... one of the best games last year. Easy. Yeah, that's a big deal. You'd also be able to deal. say then, hey, we have the whole Yakuza series on Game Pass, which is like exactly. a thousand hours of Yakuza. So that'd be cool. Literally. <laughs> Literally <laughs> games are so Good God. And with that, we'll move on to the game. Daniel? What is the game? We are playing another tw uh, round of 20 questions. So I, I will, I, I guess I will, I'm sure, Tucker, I'm sure you know how to play 20 questions. Sure. The only rule to like how we play is I give you full 20 questions. And then if you don't get, you get one guess after that. You can guess in between if you really know it. But instead of like it, the last guess being a part of the 20 questions, I give don't you risk the it though, full. Tucker. You got to be 100% sure. Yeah. Good Lord. Okay. Uh, I have the game pulled up. Right Sims, here. okay. <laughs> That's uh, weird. I have the uh, the game here, and I'm ready whenever you are. Did this game come out before the year 2000? Not before, no. Thank God. Did this game come out before the year 2010? Yes. You gotta stop doing that. No! <laughs> no! This is the game! I like to corner you, you little punk! <laughs> okay. I feel uh, like I've been sat in this chair for so long. We're looking at a 2000s is... game. Yeah. Uh, is this even alive? <laughs> nope. Is this game a triple A game? Ooh, that's a great question. Would I consider this a triple A game? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's not triple A. Mm. My only one is looks helpful. Am I the only one that tries to read the Wikipedia page through his glasses? <laughs> good luck. <laughs> one, but that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't have the eyesight for that. <laughs> He's gonna pull up some weird shit just so it reflects on his glass. <laughs> oh yeah, I can. I can. No, like please that. no. Can't uh, see it. No. Okay, is this a multiplayer game? Ooh, I don't. I don't think so. It's a good question. I'm gonna say no. No. I'm gonna say no. I don't know. I honestly, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that there is. I'm not a hundred percent. So maybe I shouldn't say I can't answer and it's that question. Not a triple A, right? Yeah, okay. I wouldn't call it triple A. I'm gonna say there's not, but I, I, I don't, I don't actually fully know. Uh, all right, cool. Let's get a uh, console down. Is this game a? Well, I don't want to ask if it's a, an exclusive. This game come out game... before. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Oh. Did, did this game come out before the year 2005? Yeah. That's before where I was 2005. So yeah, two thousand. Okay, early two thousand five. Right. So what we need to do That's now is we need to go out. from January two thousand all the way to December. So month by month, we'll just get a release date of the games. Okay? Right. 
Wow. Why don't you just try to figure out, out what the game actually is? <laughs> <laughs> just four hours be, of putting be together. Too easy. <laughs> uh, okay. 2000, 2005. Is this game... So we're looking at the PS2 Xbox generation. Mostly. Very early of it. GameCube as well. Uh, also, some N64 games came out in 2000. Could also be Game Boy Advanced. Ooh, handhelds. I like what you're thinking. Yeah. Is this a Nintendo game? Like, no. Uh, How does no. he remember the Game Boy Advance? How do I remember that the Game Boy Advance exists? Yeah, he wasn't even <laughs> born when it was... <laughs> We're just picking I've, on... I've got a Game Boy. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> I had the Game Boy SP, like a black... Yeah, I've got an SP. Folded. Yeah. The bold one, yeah. Wow. Oh, I love the SP. I dropped mine in a mobile key once. And he actually love... continued to work. Amazing. Mine's Amazing. Wild. Is this a handheld game? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, so it's not Game Boy Advance. There goes my my uh, uh my it's not one contribution. Game. Is this game uh, exclusive to the PlayStation? Oh, it was exclusive to the PlayStation. Boys, you got to ask the right questions. Yeah, if you play in the game, yeah, you got to play in the game. Put yeah, that on a T-shirt. Who who sang that song? What? You're a wrestling fan. You should know. Who did that song? Oh, should play. Oh, the song? Motor. Yeah. Motor. Motor. The yeah, there you go. The water out when he, when uh, he was that out. was his outro, but there was he got that song from Motor. Badass yeah. when he spits that water yeah. out. Yeah. yeah I'll do that no more. Or, yeah. No. <laughs> Triple H can't do that no more. Oh, because of COVID. No, yeah. Okay. I get it. I get it. I was like, why? <laughs> I mean, he's not really wrestling very much anymore. He can still do it. But, uh, okay. Uh, so this is exclusive to the. Do we know one or two? It's got to be two, right? Yeah, well, he just said pl to the PlayStation now. Do when did the PlayStation two come out? Two thousand and one. Two thousand one. Yeah. So it probably is more than likely. Two thousand, just in general, Daniel is trying to. Two thousand was it? Two thousand. Two thousand one's Xbox. Cool. Hey, it was a. Uh, Seems um, a lot. Okay, uh, it was exclusive. So. So uh, did this. Is this game? A part of a large series. Ooh. Hmm. Question. I think that's a, that's a pretty clear yes or no for that. <laughs> well, what defined it was large. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Well, that, Here you uh, go. Okay, well, then it's not. Then it's not a I'm going to say it's a part of a series, but not a large series. Okay, okay, okay. Is okay, this okay. series still going today? Kind of. That's 10. I hate his answers. I hate it. Kind of. What do you mean? Is this game... That's the only way I can answer it. Is this game a first-person shooter? No. Oh, I've done. That's me out. You hate first-person shooters. Yeah, but I was thinking... I was thinking splitters of time. Time splitters. Splitters of time. I didn't want him... I didn't want him to take it as a... What did you say? Ninja Turtle first-person shooter. That's Splinter, Daniel. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. See, see. Uh, okay. Continuing on. Uh, okay. So, wh wh where are we at? We have. It's we a need it. We need a... It was exclusive. We need a genre. Is this a fighting game? Yeah. Is this a fighting game? No. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, though, that was also the era, like two PS2, early PS2 is like 3D platformers, like mascot platformers. So, yeah. Is this a 3D platformer? Why? Yeah. Is it a 3D platformer? It is not a mm -hmm. 3D platformer. Okay, well, that knocks out a lot of those PS2 exclusives. Very much does. And uh, it's still is... kind of going as well. Yeah, that, that's so, so it's, weird. It's, okay. not, it's not Ratchet, is it? No. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. It's not a Hold 3D on. platformer. Yeah, Ratchet's a 3D Hold platformer. Hold on. I've got, a, I've got an inkling. I've got oh, an inkling. What is it there, Tucker? Well, I'm not going to say it because I would, would that count as a guess? No, because you're not just, technically. No, you could say you it. Can you, say it. you just it. can't ask. You guys it. can talk amongst yourselves. Okay. I'm feeling PS2, early PS2, exclusive, not one of those genres you mentioned, in a, in a series that might still kind of be going, Katamari. Katamari? Interesting. No, no. Hmm. Maybe. But it does fit all the criteria. Shit. Hmm. Katamari, I don't even know. What do you describe that game as? What even is that? I'm trying to that's think of a thing. genre. Is it, if you can't, if you that? can't limit it down to that a genre, like, oh, that's outside. A series that's kind of big, but it's not AAA. 
Is this a racing game? Is it a racing game? No. How many Just questions we got? Courage, six. Uh, you got six more. Good. Maybe try to get a developer. I'm trying. I'll help. I can help you. Maybe try to get a developer. Wow. Thanks, Daniel. Well, but if it's not clearly AAA, we can like we can say. Forgot about that. Not clearly AAA. Fuck, but like AAA what, what might have meant everything was like... AAA on this show. Was it? I was gonna say nothing was AAA. Yeah, I'm like I'm not, I'm not trying to help you. I feel like more like Sims. I feel like there are very few AAA Sims games. Back AAA. Then. Like, there was I, probably... I guess I don't know. What do we describe as a AAA? The AAA, AAA to me is game. always just like it, it's a full price if game. It's from, yeah, if it's from a big, big developer. developer. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's AAA to me. But even then, uh, Katamari was published by Namco, so maybe I need to fuck. Fuck. What does Katamari start with a K? Yes. Katamari Damacy. Start with a K. Is that really a question you would ask? Yeah. It does start with a K. Oh! Is this game <laughs> developed by Konami? Konami? No. Ooh, I'm, I'm with Tucker on okay, the Katamari. It starts with a K. Oh, with Lord. K. Maybe I. Maybe I. Katamari is the game where you roll around and you pick shit up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Katamari Damacy, early PS2 game. From a de from published by Namco, but developed by a smaller studio, like a smaller studio. It's not like a huge thing. But in the series, well, is the series still going? I don't know. There was a mobile game. What was that game? There was that a game re oh, there was a remake. There's a re-roll. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you roll around and pick shit up in this game? Mm-hmm. You do. Oh. Fucking hell! Oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa! <laughs> this is, incredible. is this game Katamari Damacy? It is Katamari Damacy. Oh it my god! That was amazing! Katamari. It was, it was, it technically it was uh, developed by Namco, but oh, like sure. it was, it was not a huge, like it was not the biggest part. Uh, and yeah. it was published and uh, developed uh, 2004 on the PS2. It was released uh, for PC and Switch in 2018. Uh, it was uh, released last year for uh, uh, current That's consoles cool. last year. Uh, I would consider it a puzzle game and maybe like an adventure game. That's probably like yeah. the two genres I would say. Katamari Damacy, one of my top 10 did, favorite games of all did time. Did Damacy have any multiplayer? Was there like a co-op yes. mode in this first one? No, you can do a mode where you fight to see who gets the biggest ball in a sort of gotcha. much, sort, okay. short amount gotcha. of time. So it's like it's like a battle mode for lo only local multiplayer. Cool. Uh, really and according to you guys, game. a game that came out before I was even born. So It did, it did. I don't know how you played it. I mean, you were uh, only born in 2015, you know? So, <laughs> would you guys consider this a AAA game? I don't think so, right? No. Okay. And Katamari's never been a huge series. The It, it being a part of, like, uh, a new... Is it still relevant? Like, it was because of the re-release. -re That's the only reason yeah. why I said that. And, yeah, Katamari Damacy. That good job, Tucker. You really helped these two. So oh, good. You really Jeez. helped these two. That was incredible. What? I was trying to challenge what? you guys' this knowledge, and you really pulled through, Tucker. Well, man, I'm telling you, Katamari Damacy, and I played it on a, a PS2. I have the disc, everything. One of my favorite games of all time. I play, replayed that game so many times. I got the re-roll on Switch. We played it plenty there. I love, we love Katamari. The sequel is is also fantastic. Touch my Katamari. I have not played because I don't have a Vita. Me and my Katamari also kind of good, but PSP doesn't work for that. That's a franchise a that game. I can, yeah, yeah, which is sucks, which is stupid. Not a Katamari game, but I can't believe that I actually got that. I'm surprised you did. I, I yeah, can't believe we Good have job. a Katamari super fan here, and it was Katamari. <laughs> I <laughs> can't oh, believe shit. I've never heard of this game. Yeah, you have. <laughs> this is that really weird game where you have the ball and you're like picking up everything. I've probably seen it, but I've never. Fantastic yeah. music. You got the king floating around. Oh, you've 100 seen this game. So you've seen like... the little character, the little green guy with the antenna. The king is like really people know what the king looks like. I think that's probably the the, the music's the great. Yeah, that game's so good, man. Get get cat everyone homework. Get Katamari Damacy reroll on Nintendo Switch or one of the other consoles. Fantastic game, very short, very replayable, high score based, really fun, unique concept. I love I love that. Yeah, I've never played the game. I've never played it. Katamari, man. And with that. That was the Nerdic Gods episode uh, 67. Yeah, yeah, I forgot already. Uh, please go check out Tucker's channel, Backlog Banter. Tucker, you want to pimp that out a little bit? In in what way? I mean, I, I mean, just you know, tell people go check it out, man. Please do. I mean, I, I mean, if, if you want to know what I did, I don't want to completely reiterate, but go listen to the beginning of the episode again if you want to know exactly what it is that I do. But um, I do have. A Twitter, which is hard to pronounce, so I'm not going to make you guys say it, but uh, you can put it on the on screen or in the description or whatever. It's I'll right trust your ending. It's right in front of your face right now, sir. So. 
it's oh, right it's here. Shot. It's right here. I'm not, I'm not or, it, actually, I'm I can't go down lower. It's like right there. Let's check it okay. out. My missus yeah, did it my girlfriend yeah, did right a nice there. little like Minecraft logo. That's great. Oh, thank you. Um, but I would I I very much enjoyed being on here with you guys. Uh you you got me with the Katamari thing and I was on the perfect episode, so thank you very much for having me around here. Yeah, anytime you want to come back. Anytime. Hey, I would love to. You've been great. I've um really enjoyed your company. Thank you, thank you. I'll I'll be back here whenever you guys want me. Tucker, we thank you so much for coming on. Please go check out Tucker's channel. Daniel, thank you. Sims, thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Everybody. Yeah. You can't forget to thank yourself.